I think that biology over the last 20 years or so has evolved from a cottage industry where most research groups were small and uh, produced data in a really artisanal way to much more of a quote-unquote big science field where a lot of the approaches are now involve generations of very large amounts of data. And this is a very significant paradigm shift, a change in the way biologists work, but also uh, it has exposed vulnerabilities in the training of biologists because most of them don't really think of their work in terms of quantitative approaches uh, that require fairly large scale computational resources that require very solid grounding in statistics that require uh, some amount of programming and so forth. So there's a gap there. And so it's not only that biologists need this in order to be able to do their research. It's also that more and more in order to convince funding agencies that they're actually capable of doing things like this. They need to be able to point to a unit on campus saying, hey, these guys know how to do this and they will help us. And that's also a major reason why we exist. So HPC Bio was created a little over three years ago uh, to replace an existing uh, group that was purely concentrating on delivering services in bioinformatics to, to the campus community here. And when we thought about how to uh, redefine this group, we decided to give it four different missions. Um, the first one is to provide infrastructure. And infrastructure means computers, software, reference data, an environment that people can use to analyze uh, biological, biomedical data. Uh, by the way, this infrastructure also supports the high throughput DNA sequencing center at the Biotechnology Center. Uh, our second mission is training. And training is very important because we do not want everybody on this campus, all the biomedical researchers, to be eternally dependent on us. We'd like them to be able to use the computational facilities to analyze their own data and require less and less help from us. Uh, the third mission is support. And by support, I mean providing an environment where campus researchers can come to us, ideally before they even do their experiments, where they're just thinking about a project and they're thinking about how are we going to do this from a technical point of view. And we help them define how to best apply techniques, how to best gather their data, what technologies to use, and then afterwards, of course, the main part of the work is that we help them analyze the data and make sense out of them. Uh, the fourth mission is a little unusual for a service-oriented facility, and that's to do what we call applied R&D. And applied R&D means thinking about where our work is going to be going over the next few years and thinking about what kinds of things we will need to be able to do and prepare for that. And that means sometimes testing new software, new methods, testing new hardware, sometimes developing methods, sometimes exploring the boundaries in terms of scale of what we are able to do. So all of these activities that kind of prepare the future. Uh, we have a staff of about a dozen people now. So we have Part of our staff are the people who interact primarily with the biologists and who help them uh, define their problems and solve them. And these are all people who had basic training in biology and then followed up by getting uh, also some amount of training in computational science. Uh, on the other side, we have a group of people who are primarily computational scientists and who really know how to put together the machines, how to make them work and so forth, and who are very high quality programmers. 
and but these people have to work together on a regular basis and talk to each other all the time and that is really how you put a team together so we are a different university from most in the countries uh, in the sense that the research strengths on campus here are not in kind of traditional biology and medicine so there's a huge breadth of interest on campus in exploring life in all of its dimensions and in ways it, it affects the environment, it affects agriculture, farm animals, crops. And because of that, we have a much wider portfolio of projects than you would find in most facilities that would be in our peer institutions. So to give you an example, we've done a lot of work looking at bacterial and archaeal communities that live in hot springs in Yellowstone Park. There are several faculty members on campus who are interested in that. And uh, by uh, sequencing their collective genomes, what's known as a metagenome, we've learned a lot about how they live and what kind of things they metabolize and how they manage to survive in a very hostile environment of, host of a hot spring. Uh, we've also had a number of projects on agricultural pests where we look at their genomes and try to figure out uh, how the pests that are particularly dangerous to the crops are different at their DNA level from strains that are more less harmful and in many ways also how we can use this kind of information to develop better pest control. So these are just a few examples. Uh, at any one time, typically, we work on, on about a dozen different projects. And over a course of a year, we'll easily uh, do like a hundred different projects. <laughs>